everybody welcome back to the channel hi bookers welcome back to another video with me jessica leo as you know i love me to read okay actually before we even start are you subscribed to the channel and if you're not why because what what it's what it's going on um as you guys know i love to read if you watch my vlogs you know that i love to read and it's just a thing for me okay i love to do it as it is what it is and every now and again i will always do a wrap up as well as a to be read list so i always put them together because i feel like um i i don't have enough time to do it all like if, at the end of every month and all of that i'm far too busy for that so when i feel like i've collected a nice amount of books and i know what i'm going to read going forward for the next couple of months then i share it in a video in a sit down video like right now so i hope you guys are doing well thank you so much for being here thank you so much for subscribing thank you so much for choosing me over and over again we are going to talk about books and i'm so glad to hear that so many of you have started reading i've been doing book giveaways on instagram are you following me on instagram because i do quite a few giveaways on there and you know we're just living our best bookish lives you know what i'm saying so i really would love it if you stuck around and you are going to see my book wrap up of the books that i've read this year which is around 11 books in march who am i right who am i my darling um it's around 11 books read them this year so excited to share them with you so and the first book that i read this year is this one this is a liwa by our very own south african author jackie pamuti now let me tell you if you are someone who loves dark so you get a contemporary fiction right but you get a dark story with really who really 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 difficult subjects to read but also at the same time kind of you know interesting and it pulls you in if you want something that's going to keep you entertained i highly recommend this book for entertainment value it is star one okay so this follows liwa liwa and also noel to be honest but the story is more centrally focused on um liwa and it follows these two friends who grow up in the rural lands of port alfred as they grow up it's a really really tough relationship that they build over the years but they are extremely close so much so that they grow up and they end up working together so liwa has is an architect and she's got this architecture firm that is doing really really well and the other end of the firm is noel who actually does the interior design for all these buildings that they built fantastic super wonderful But this is what's the funny thing is Noel has a very dark secret obsession with her friend that we just don't get it's a why for you know and what happens is as their business keeps thriving as Liwa's business keeps thriving their business keeps thriving bodies are found dead bodies keep being found people around them keep dying but the business seems to be climbing and that's all i'm going to say like it's it's it it follows their dark history but also at the same time what is happening that causes all these dead people to be around them but their business to continue thriving so it's got very big topics on obsession and desire and you know money power and what you will do when you're extremely obsessed with someone the lengths you would go to um there is a lot of very difficult subjects to read like children dying as well so i really do think you should check out the trigger warnings for this as well um but there's very yeah yeah blood lots of blood okay that's it but it's really 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 good for entertainment it's so so good really loved it easy to get through really finished it in like 2 days or 3 days or something like that enjoyed it really really loved it thanks jackie it was a, that was a good one that was a good one after that is a book i regretted reading <laughs> this is diary of an oxygen thief and i'm going to tell you something i'm not even going to give you a full synopsis on this book because i just don't care i really don't this is diary of an oxygen thief by anonymous now anonymous has three 
books of which i have another one of them it's called chameleon in a candy store and i i really hope that that one is better than this one in this one you follow mm, uh what's his name i don't think we know his name okay you follow this young man who gets his heart broken by a woman that he loves and because of that this narcissistic prick honestly this narcissistic misogynistic man decides to go on a spree of hurting women and breaking their hearts so in this you literally just follow his day-to-day -day account of him dating women sleeping with them using them not really caring what um how they feel he just couldn't be bothered all because someone hurt him and now he wants to go around hurting others i just couldn't stand it it reeked of misogyny it reeked of a narcissistic character who is so unlikable and maybe that was the intention for the author to make this character unlikable however you can have an unlikable character but actually enjoy their story I did not like anything about this book. I felt like this was a waste of time for me, honestly. So that's that on that. The next okay. book I read is Cultish, and I'm going to put it here. It's Cultish, the language of fanaticism, fanaticism, fanaticism. And with this book, I loved it. I listened to it on audio, which is something I really enjoy to do, especially when I'm driving to and from work, to and from the mall, to and from wherever it is that I'm going, meeting friends, going out, that kind of thing, seeing uh, Diesel. And it is a nonfiction book that follows the trajectory of cults and what cults have you know, the language that cults have used over time to draw people in and how the power of what is being used in certain cults like Scientology and Jonestown and uh, the, the, the Manson cult. There's quite a few cults that are mentioned and I'm somebody who is so into cults. Like I will watch Netflix documentaries on cults because I learn that shit. I learn that shit so much. And, um, but again, the great thing about it is that it doesn't only talk about those kinds of religious cults, but it also looks at things like soul cycle and it looks at things like Instagram and influencing. And it looks at how, you know, cool things that people have now, uh, uh, uh adapted to and do a lot and, uh, how these, these, you know, like Peloton and how these, things have created this cult following like uh, there's a brand of uh, a athleisure called lululemon overseas which i've heard of as well and how they've just developed a cult following purely due to the words that they use the society that we live in and how influential it is by just using the power of how you communicate and the words that you use to draw people in it was fantastic i thought that it was it was just i loved it i loved it and i really think if you're somebody who's into cult cults and any kind of types of cults, not even just religious cults, you definitely should check this book out. Oops, you definitely should check this book out. The next book I read, <laughs> the next book I read after that is Hamnet. And my goodness, I loved this book. This book was my life. Oh man, I love this book. So in Hamnet, we follow Hamnet. <laughs> we follow the son of William Shakespeare, Hamnet, and his um, life and what happens to him, right? So this book opens with Hamnet trying to find an adult in the house because his twin sister Judith has taken ill and she's become worse, right? So Hamnet is running around the house trying to find the grandfather, trying to find the dad, trying to find this, trying to find anybody running down the street, trying to find anybody, the mom, the dad, anybody. The dad wasn't around, he was in London, William Shakespeare writing his plays and all of that but the story takes place in two dual timelines so you see the current moment with Hamlet and what is happening with Judith but at the same time you see the history of Agnes Arnius Shakespeare's wife and I feel like this 
book is a, is a silent love story to the life of Agnes and how wonderful she is and how beautiful she is. I just, the writing in this book is impeccable. There is nothing like it. I have never, oh my God, the writing in this book is amazing. It's so good. It had me so enthralled. I cried three times in this book. Three times in, the, in the, at certain points in this book, I cried. But we follow Agnes's life as well and the love that she had for her children and almost the, 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 the fantastical powers that she had with plants and healing people. And what I love about this book is it takes the light away from William Shakespeare. It literally, we don't care about Shakespeare at this point. We know he is always referred to as the son, the husband, the father of Hamnet, the father of Judith, Suzanne. He's always referred to as the something. He is never referred to as William Shakespeare. And I love that. I think it was so important to literally decentralize him from the story and even though we get a lot a lot of parts that feature especially with the, his love story with Arnias as well and the trials and the tribulations that they go through and what a married couple goes through as well but I love that it decentralized it and took it away Hamnet is everything he is everything the relationship that he has with his twin is everything and how the the twist and how he died this is not a, a spoiler it does say that he he does not survive the week the twist on how that happens broke my heart broke my little old puny heart but i loved it i loved it five out of five loved it Oh, that's so good. Then I listened to Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield. And my goodness, did I love this book. I think I spoke about it um, uh, uh, in one of my vlogs. It's a very quiet but very intense horror, right? So none of the gore, none of the... No, it gives you that feeling of suspense. Like you're dreading what's about to happen, what's going on. I rated this one a five out of five, and this is this. It follows uh, Miri and Leah, M Mir, Miri and Leah, who are wives, and um, Leah is a marine biologist. So a lot of the time she spends out at sea, and she is underwater, and she's doing studies and research and things like this. And there is the one time, and it follows both of them. The book follows both of them. And the one time she goes to the sea on this expedition, something goes wrong while they're out there, but they manage to come back, but Leah comes back different. And now you are seeing Miri recount to you, the reader, what is going on, how her wife has changed, how her wife is different, how her wife is taking longer baths, and how her wife, something is deteriorating within her, and you are watching Mary see this in real time, that something happened to her down there because the Leah who came back is not the Leah who went. And wow, it is a horror, and it's, it's definitely a horror because watching what happens to Leah that causes her to take all these baths and how she just doesn't want food anymore. Instead, she only wants salty things, really loving fish sardines. And you're wondering, what in the world happened to this woman down there? And uh, it's so exciting. Mm, I loved it so much. Definitely highly recommend this one. If you are a horror reader, read it listen to it um the audiobook was so enjoyable as well for me great then i read trick mirror which is oh oops 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 i'm on the wrong this is the one that i really didn't enjoy i felt it was very very close to um what is this very similar what it was trying to do was something that cultish actually executed very very well um but I didn't quite enjoy it. 
jokes aside, I really didn't quite enjoy it because it says that it is an enlightening, unforgettable trip through the river of self-delusion that surges just beneath the surface of our lives. So talks a lot about um, cults, but it also talks a lot about Instagram. It mentions a lot about soul cycle and whatever. The concept, the social commentary behind it is very similar to what cultish did. However, didn't execute it quite well. Um, so the nightmare that is social, in, social influencing and the internet and all of that did not quite execute it quite well. I really didn't enjoy it. And I remember saying that I don't think I get, I reviewed and I said, I don't think I get what the hype is surrounding this book because I found it incredibly frustrating to read. Yes, the cultural criticism was quite direct, but I felt like delivering the message felt verbose all over the place. You know, when a book tries to sound smart, it's like, let it go. Just bring it down to the bones. Tell us in layman's terms what you're trying to say. And it probably would have been much better for me to consume or engage with had that been the case. Um, and so for me, it just felt like a recollection of what happened through history, specific books, shows, moments in the author's life. And it just felt overall long winded. So I really didn't enjoy it. I gave it a two out of five. Really, really, really didn't enjoy it. Okay. The next one I read after that was Miss Mariana Enriquez. This is a short story collection, horror novels, um, horror short stories, which are set in Buenos Aires, um, which I believe is in Argentina. It is. I don't know. I don't remember. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'll put it down here. But we follow multiple stories that um, are dark. And it's a whole lot of horror, okay? <laughs> There's some gory things, okay? Some of them are really scary. Some of them, you know, it's about ghosts. It's about murderous intentions, family betrayals, seeing things, um, you know, the, the history of the town and seeing ghosts around the town. Man, it, I really loved it. For someone who's a short story collection lover, I love this. But you know, with short stories, you're not always going to get all of them being your favorite. There's some of them that I just really, really didn't care for at all. Um, but I did highlight the ones that I did like, uh, which was the first um, story, Angelita Unearthed, The Cart, The Well, uh, Ramla Triste, Where Are You, uh, uh, Dear Heart, Meat, which is about this pop star sensation guy, right, who dies, but he's got so many female fans and he's got two that just take it a little bit too far and they unearth his body and potentially eat it. Like, it's, ah, I really, really enjoyed it. I found it so entertaining. It was a wonderful time. I really, really love that one. Huh. Okay. Okay, then I read Shoko Smile and I loved it. It was so beautiful. It was a collection of short stories, again, but that focus on relationships and what happens when someone you love or people you love uh, grow. No, it follows relationships and what happens between two people who love each other and who are so close but end up growing distant so distant that in some cases they actually can't stand each other. What, it, it goes into the dynamic of how emotions are and how you, you just don't understand how you can love someone so much but detest them really or can't stand them. And that process of how emotions continue to go up and down and fluctuate and you know, the dynamic of what happens to characters' relationships when that happens, you know, uh, loving someone and then drifting apart from them, whether it be your sister, your partner, um, your, you know, your parent. Oh, man, I loved it. I loved it. I read this, listened to this. This is Come With Me by Ronald Murphy. Again, it is listed as a horror, but I really think it's a, it's more of a, it's more of a quiet thriller, 
You know, it's a thriller, but not thriller. Get my chat. <laughs> but um, I really loved this one because, oh my God. So we follow this couple, right? And um, I forget, I forgot their names. I, I listened to it so long ago, I forgot their names. But the wife leaves at the beginning of the book, the wife leaves her husband in bed and says, listen, I'm going to go run a couple of errands uh, and I'll see you. But actually, why don't you come with me? Maybe we can have, hence the title of the book, why don't you come with me? Maybe we can go have, you know, brunch, breakfast at our favorite spot. And the husband's just like, bruh, man, I'm tired, bro. Nah, uh-uh, uh-uh. No, ma'am. Like, you do your thing. I love you. I'll see you when you get back. But now I'm tired, bro. So she says, okay, fine. Cool. I'll be back. See you. Um, and then he finds out in a rather unfortunate way that his wife, uh, a shooter comes into a shop where his wife is and she gets killed. And it's what he unearths after that that becomes the shocker of the century. Um, he realizes that his wife has been leading a double life, right? So he's going through her things. He just cannot, the wife is a journalist. He just cannot understand how he doesn't know the certain parts of his wife's life, how she managed to keep this from him. While at the same time, his emotional state is deteriorating because he keeps seeing her and hearing things and uh, he decides to go down this rabbit hole of finding out what things his wife was researching and 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 um you know murders of young girls that the wife was researching and why and he starts going down this rabbit hole and literally doing the investigations himself and uh, I found it entertaining. I, I thought it was entertaining. I didn't think it was the best thing I've ever read or listened to in terms of the thriller aspect. And I really didn't think it was um, some, uh, it doesn't qualify to be called a horror, but I, it was okay. It was okay. So it was just one of those books. It was okay, bro, bra. But then after that, I listened to Crossroads. <laughs> Listen to this book. Read it or listen to it. It is a horror. Now, this one is a horror, okay? We follow the relationship between... Man, I forget their names. I'm so bad at this. I'm so bad at remembering the characters' names, especially when it's a audiobook because I'm listening. Whereas with, with, with a book book, I can actually... Um, I'm seeing the name over and over and over, so I'm more likely to remember it. Anyway, but... This follows the relationship between Chris and her son, Trey, right? And Trey passes away and uh, he dies. And they have such a close relationship that Chris actually struggles with dealing with the passing of her son. She doesn't understand. He, he passes away because he gets run over. Uh, he gets into an accident by the side of the road and she goes to his accident scene every single day. But here's the thing, she can hear him. So he talks to her every time that he, she is there. He talks to her, he says things, they have conversations. He goes home with her, he's having, so you're watching this woman who has completely deteriorated and has complete, has gone into a complete manic episode because she's, she's She's seeing him. She actually believes that he's there. And then one day, he just stops. He stops coming. Now, the question about it is, how far are you willing to go for someone you love? And the things that she ends up doing, great, they're cutting the grass. And the things that she ends up doing to get her son back are wild. And does he come back? And if he does come back, does he come back okay? Oh, man. It was, I love that far, far, far. It kept me on my toes. I think I read, listened to it in two days. It was fairly short. I loved it. Loved it. And then after that, the last book I finished was The Patient by Jasper DeWitt. DeWitt. Again, another one that I really loved. A horror novel. Oh my gosh. I, I really feel like I enjoy horrors, especially if I'm listening to them. This one we follow... 
a psychotherapist who begins a new job in a mental institution and is quite enamored with this one patient, right? The patient, right? The name of the patient is, is Lu, who? Joe, Joe. <laughs> the name of the patient is Joe and Joe has been in this institution since he was six years old. Comes from a very wealthy family. The family just keeps feeding the institution money to try and figure out what is going on with Joe. Joe is one of the most feared and revered uh, 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 thingies. Um, He's one of the most feared and revered patients, the feared by staff and feared by other patients alike. So, so they keep him separate to everybody else. And uh, yeah, I absolutely, I loved it. I feel like this video is going to be too long to also add the books that I want to read, that I'm looking forward to reading. So I think I might just leave that one to the membership space. This is far too long as it is. It's far too long. Um, but Joe... Is there's something wrong with Joe, bro? Okay, from the things that he did to other patients, to the things that he 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 uh, is doing to the doctors, the mental games. This psychotherapist Parker, this psychotherapist is like, I need to find out what is going on with Joe. Why Joe is causing all of this to happen? And wow, when he does find out what it is. At the end of the book, lying through the walls of Joe's family home. Oh my God. Oh my God. I loved it. Okay, this is long enough. I really, there's so many books that I want to talk about with regards to the books that I'm looking to read, forward to reading. So I think I'm going to leave that one for the membership space, which is fine. My members get a little bit of everything. Are you a member? If you're not, please do join the membership space. There's so much new content that's going to come on there that I'm so, so excited to share. So, so excited to share. Um, and that's what I'm going to share. Yeah. Anyway, thank Bye. you so much for watching this video. Have you read some of these books? And if you have, let me know, what are you reading? Is there something that you read that you feel like, oh, I need you to read this book? Let me know what it is down below. And then I'm going to try and get onto that as soon as I find some time. I've got a lot of books to get through. All the books on the shelf I haven't read. And there's a shelf behind you that I haven't read the books from either. So lot, lots of books to get through. But uh, yeah. Thank you so much for watching this video because as always, thank you so much for choosing me over and over again. I really do appreciate that you are here. And if you are reading because of me, I'm even happier. Thank you so much. I gotta go. I'll see you in the next bookish video. <laughs> Bye.